and we'll look at the Day of Atonement. It's verses 28 and then 30 to 32. We'll read. It says, And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath, a Shabbat of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath, your Shabbat. Now this Day of Atonement is the only annual Sabbath that was called a Shabbat. All the other ones were called Shabbaton. And the Day of Atonement was the highlight of the Jewish economy, the Jewish year. This was the greatest day of the year, the Day of Atonement, and it was called a Shabbat. And on that day, you'll notice that it says you're to do no manner of work whatsoever. No work at all. The Shabbat days, no work at all was allowed, but all the other Shabbaton days were no servile work. That was all that was prohibited. Now, let's read Leviticus 23, verses 39 and 40. Notice the word Sabbath is used again here. And it says, Also, in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, that's Shabbaton, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. That's Shabbaton. So that is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then it goes on and it says, And ye shall take you on the first day the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. That was the Feast of Tabernacles. I'm sorry, I said Unleavened Bread a moment ago. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the seventh month, the 15th through the 22nd days of the seventh month. And notice it said, they're called Shabbaton days, not Shabbats, not Sabbaths, but Shabbaton. And it says no servile work was allowed in those days, but what was allowed and even commanded was they were to go out, gather branches and boughs of the trees, and they were to fashion and make themselves um, temporary dwelling places for those seven days where they were to abide in the in these dwelling places they had to go and build these things on the 15th day of the seventh month and that was a Shabbaton day now that was work that was not allowed on a Shabbat day and we'll notice that in Numbers 15 verses 32 and also 36 we read they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath on the Shabbat day and all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died as the Lord commanded Moses. So here we see that picking up sticks is not allowed on the Sabbath day, but it was allowed on the Shabbaton days. Now let's look at this comparison again. Food preparation was not allowed on the Sabbath, on the Shabbat days, but it was allowed on the Shabbaton days. Baking unleavened cakes, not allowed on the Shabbat, but it was allowed on the Shabbaton days. Roasting a lamb with fire, not allowed on the Shabbat, but it was allowed on the Shabbaton days. Burning a carcass with fire, not allowed on the Sabbath, not even allowed to kindle a fire on the Sabbath, but on the Shabbaton days, it was allowed. Gathering branches and building booths, definitely not allowed on the Sabbath. You would be killed for such a thing. But on the Shabbaton days, it was allowed. They were, they were to gather sticks and branches, and they were to build a temporary dwelling for themselves. So here is a brief comparison so far of these two manner of days, two words in the Bible that are both translated Sabbath. One is a Shabbaton day, one is a Shabbat day. And now we'll find in Exodus chapter 12, we'll read verses 29 to 31, and then verse 33. And here is when did the Israelites depart from Egypt? It says, And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. And all the firstborn of cattle, and Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not an house where there was not one dead. 
And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord, as ye have said. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people, that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We be all dead men. So now you notice the timing of this. The Passover was to be killed at sundown, going down to the sun between the 14th and the 15th days. And then the Passover is to be killed, ro or roasted with fire, and then eaten that night. And if anything was left over, they had to burn it the next morning with fire. But it says that very night, the destroying angel came through and killed the firstborn of Egypt. And it says it happened at midnight that night. So that was the 15th day of the month at midnight the angel came through and killed all the firstborn. And then it says that Pharaoh rose up by night and he called Moses and Aaron by night. That very night he called them and says, Get out of Egypt. And it says all of Egypt was urgent upon the people that they would send them out in haste. And that was one reason why they were the Israelites were told to have their staff in their hand when they ate the food ate that lamb roast with fire. They had to have their shoes on their feet. They had to be all dressed and ready to go when they ate that lamb because they were leaving that night to go out of Egypt. So that was on the 15th day of the first month. And now in Deuteronomy 16, verse 1, the Bible says, In the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. So you notice that they were brought out that very night between the midnight and the uh, the beginning of the next day they were leaving Egypt. Now let's also notice in Exodus chapter 12 verse 51 it says, And it came to pass the selfsame day, which is the 15th day of Abib, that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So they came out of Egypt on the 15th day of the month by night, the Bible says. They did not wait an extra day. So let's also read now in Numbers chapter 33, verse 3. It says, And they departed from Ramesses in the first month on the fifteenth day of the first month. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. So the fifteenth day of the month is when they went out of Egypt. Let's also read Jeremiah chapter 17. We'll read 21 and 22. Here it says, Thus saith the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath, that's the Shabbat days, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem, neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Shabbat day, neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath, the Shabbat day, as I commanded your fathers. So here we find that it was not allowed to bring anything out of your house. You weren't allowed to carry a burden out of your house on the Sabbath. Now let's look at a comparison again of these days that we've seen so far. Food preparation, not allowed on the Sabbath, but it is allowed on the Shabbaton days. Baking unleavened cakes, forbidden on the Sabbath, but it's okay on the Shabbaton days. Roasting a lamb with fire, it is not allowed on the Sabbath, but it is on the Shabbaton days. Burning a carcass with fire, not allowed on the Sabbath. No fire was to be kindled at all. But on the Shabbaton days, it was allowed. Gathering branches and building booths, definitely not allowed on the Sabbath. The death penalty was carried if carried out if you did. But on the Shabbaton days, it was allowed. Carrying a